Hey everyone and welcome back to this class. In this lecture, I'm going to go over a better way to install data science and machine learning libraries for Python for Windows users. Historically, Windows users have had a lot of problems installing this stuff. Luckily, these days there is an option that makes things very painless and just as easy as they are on Linux or Mac. That is Anaconda. In fact, even if you're not on Windows, you can still use Anaconda. It's nice because it isolates your environment from the defaults provided on your system. So for example, you can have Python 3 in Anaconda, but Python 2 as your system default. When I first started these courses, I wasn't keen on Windows since there were a few essential libraries that couldn't be installed on Windows without a significant amount of effort, if at all. In my view, anything beyond a couple of lines in the console or clicking an install file is too much. And believe me, some students even have trouble with that, so it's good not to make things too complicated before you can even begin the course. Nowadays, that has changed. It's a lot easier to install things on Windows, in large part, thanks to Anaconda. And so this lecture is all about how to install all the data science and machine learning libraries you'll need on Windows using Anaconda. So in this lecture, I'm going to walk you through how to install Anaconda as well as some of the libraries you might need that don't already come with Anaconda. You'll find that most of the common libraries such as NumPy and SciPy are already included. So if that's all you want to use, then for you, it's just a one-click install. On this slide, I'm going to give you a super short summarized version of this lecture so you don't have to walk through the installation with me if you don't want to. For some people, that really helps since you can see it, but if you can do it on your own, feel free. So, number one, download and install Anaconda. This is just a one-click install. It already includes NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas. That's all we need for the NumPy stack in Python, linear regression, and logistic regression, and a few more courses. It also comes with NLTK, which is what we use for NLP, and Scikit-Learn, which has some pre-built machine learning models. Now, even though this stuff comes by default, you can still update them if you want. So you can do conda update NumPy, for example, and that will update NumPy. Number two, install deep learning libraries. We've got pip install TensorFlow, that's going to install TensorFlow. And if you want to install Keras, you have to first do conda install pip, which is going to update pip, and then you can install Keras using pip install Keras. If you don't update pip first, you might get an error. Next we have CNTK, which is Microsoft's deep learning library. So you do pip install and then the CNTK URL, which you can get from Microsoft's website. So I'm not posting any URL here because the version could likely change in the future. And so you just Google search how to install CNTK and you can get a URL just like this. Next, we have PyTorch. That's pip install minus C, Peter JC, one, two, three, PyTorch. After that, we have Theano. So that's conda install Theano or conda install Theano PyGPU if you have an NVIDIA GPU and you've installed the CUDA toolkit already. Number three, install OpenAI Gym. That's just pip install Gym. If you want to be able to play Atari games also, then that's more involved. So just skip to the end of this lecture where I walk you through that. If you want to play and save videos using OpenAI Gym, then you also have to install FFmpeg. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the Anaconda website. That's anaconda.com slash download. Scroll down to the Windows section and click on either Python 3.6 or Python 2.7. Or if you're watching this lecture in the future and there's a new version, get that. The code in my courses is compatible with both Python 2 and Python 3. So in that regard, it doesn't really matter which one you get. In the lectures, you might see Python 2 code. But the best way to make sure you're seeing the latest version is to git pull inside the course repo. So make sure you're always doing that because I'm constantly making new updates. Now, although Python 3 is newer, there are still reasons to use Python 2. For example, in your work, you might use Python 2. Or certain platforms like Google App Engine only support Python 2. 
So if you're running a web app there, that means you're stuck with Python 2. It does have great scalability features, so there are many good reasons to use Google App Engine. If you want to get more insight on whether to choose Python 2 or Python 3, just check out the appendix lecture, Python 2 versus Python 3. So now that we've downloaded the install file, all we need to do is click on it. That's what I mean by one-click install. You click on this, hit OK a few times, and everything is done. Unfortunately, I gave my username a space, which kind of sucks, but that's what happened. So I'm sure some of you have a space in your username too. So if I come across any issues, at least you'll know what to do. All right, so everything's installed. So essentially everything except the deep learning libraries have already been automatically installed. So you don't need to manually install NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, IPython, or Scikit-Learn. So if you're taking my NumPy course, or any course that doesn't use modern deep learning libraries, you already have everything you need. So let's go into IPython and make sure that's the case. To start IPython, I go to the Start menu, type in Anaconda, and then this Anaconda prompt application should pop up. Actually, it should pop up before you even finish typing Anaconda. So we go into there, and this brings up a command line terminal. Next, just type in IPython. After that, we can import all the libraries I mentioned earlier. If we don't get an error, that means they've been installed successfully. So let's try something simple, like generating some random numbers and making a plot. Okay, so that's a plot of random noise. Let's make a histogram too. Okay, so we see a normal curve just like we expect. Now you can see that TensorFlow is not installed, which is why we get this error. But we can install it very easily by exiting IPython and then typing in pip install TensorFlow. Next, let's try to install Keras. So we get this error. So I looked this up and determined that we need to update pip. So let's do that by typing in conda install pip. Conda kind of works like pip in that way. They are all just tools for installing stuff. Okay, now let's try pip install Keras again. All right, so everything works. Next, let's try to install NLTK. This is used in my NLP courses. So it looks like it's already installed, so there's nothing more to do. Just keep in mind, if we come across a library you don't care about, feel free to ignore it. I find it's useful just to install everything at the same time so that when you're deep in the code later, you don't have to think about stuff like this. So the next thing we'll install is CNTK. This is Microsoft's deep learning library. 
Notice how it's not part of PIP, so you need to grab the URL manually from Microsoft's website. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to find because there are many pages that deal with how to install CNTK on Microsoft's website, but what you're looking for is a page that has a link to a WHL file. So copy and paste that after pip install. This is a good example because it shows you another way you can use pip by doing pip install and then a URL. Next, let's install PyTorch. This requires us to use a custom source, so we have to specify the option minus C Peter JC123. So that's conda install minus C Peter JC123 PyTorch. This is because a very nice guy called Peter JC123 has provided us with a version of PyTorch that works on Windows. And once that's all done, we can verify that they've been installed correctly by going back to IPython. All right, so TensorFlow works. Keras works. NLTK works. CNTK works. And Torch works. Next, let's install Fiano. Fiano has historically been pretty difficult to install on Windows, but nowadays, that's not the case. So if you go to their website, you'll see a bunch of instructions. If you don't want to use the GPU or you don't have a GPU, then the instructions will be very easy. I don't have a GPU on this machine, so I'm going to do the easy version. Keep in mind that Fiano is really great for learning purposes, so it's totally fine, even if you have a GPU, to just install the CPU version for now and then use the GPU version of TensorFlow. Now I ended up upgrading MKL service and libpython since that's what they told me to do on Fiano's website but it looked like these were already installed. In fact, updating MKL service gave me an issue later, so we'll have to fix that. So if you want to install Fiano for a CPU only, that's conda install Fiano. If you want to install Fiano for the GPU, then do conda install Fiano PyGPU. Now let me go into IPython and check if Fiano works. So we get an error because of this MKL service thing that I mentioned earlier. So let's set this environment variable it's telling me to set. By the way, this is great to know if you don't yet know how to set environment variables on Windows. We can also check that it worked by using the echo command. So let's try that again. Let's do a simple example of adding two numbers in Theano, just to make sure everything's working.
If you want to do something even more complicated, you can run this script from Deep Learning Part 2, which doesn't require any external data set. So just go over to the folder ANN Class 2 and type in Python gridsearch.py. So that's going to look for hyperparameters using cross validation. Now, in this last section of this lecture, we're going to talk about reinforcement learning. When we start studying reinforcement learning, there is yet another library we'll need to install called OpenAI Gem. If you don't plan on learning reinforcement learning, you can skip this part of the lecture. This has also historically been very difficult, but luckily the open source community has put in the work so you don't have to. You're welcome to read through the GitHub issue on this if you want, but I'm going to just do the simplest thing that works. So let's first do pip install gem. Great, so that worked. Now the second command is a bit longer, so let's go to the actual GitHub issue and copy and paste the command. The easiest way to get there is just to go to Google and type in install OpenAI Gem Windows Anaconda or something along those lines. So let's paste that in. And notice how it fails since I haven't yet installed git. So we can install git by doing conda install git. Now let's try it again. Unfortunately, this fails again because we need GCC, which is a C compiler. Now, one way to get GCC is to do conda install m2w64 toolchain. But unfortunately, I tried this and it also doesn't work. In fact, I think this toolchain was installed already. So I tried quite a few things that didn't work. So in order to save you some time, I'm going to recommend you only try the stuff on this page if everything else doesn't work for you. So what worked for me was to just grab the pre-compiled binary directly. Now in order to do that, you'll want to go to Kodroli's GitHub repo directly. So that's this URL here, github.com slash Kodroli slash Atari dash pi slash releases. Next, you'll want to download the wh file that matches your environment. So I have Python 3.6 on a 64-bit installation of Windows. So this is the file I want. Luckily, we already discussed earlier in this lecture how to install a wh file. That's just pip install and then the path to the file. So let's do that. Now we can test our installation by running a script that requires an Atari game. So let's cd over to rl2 and then Atari, and now let's run dqn underscore tf.py. Cool, so everything's good. Now the final thing we want to do for OpenAI Gym is if you want to play a video or save a video, you want to install FFmpeg. So to do that, you want to type in conda install minus C menpo FFmpeg. Once you've done that, you can go to the cardpool folder and type in python saveavideo.py. And this will run a script that will play the cardpool game, show a plot, and then save a video. And of course, you can also play this video by just navigating to the file and clicking on it.
So for now, that's everything. If I need to add new libraries or updates to this lecture, they will be appended at the end.